Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is a tutorial on overview of all things API. After this tutorial, you will be able to understand a lot of important topics that are related to APIs like security, testing, performance, monitoring and much much more. This tutorial is a must for all the developers irrespective of the domain whether you are front-end developer or a back-end developer or DevOps. The idea is to introduce you to all the topics that are related to API in one go. That's my attempt on this particular tutorial. Let's get started. So what are we going to learn today? We are going to learn everything about API including the HTTP verb, status codes, response headers, design patterns, architecture, security, testing, tools, performance, monitoring, and much more. Let's get started. The first things first, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. It defines a set of rules and protocols that allows different software applications to communicate and interact with each other. APIs enable developers to access and use the functionality of existing software systems or services to build new or extend existing ones. In short, when you have multiple systems that they want to communicate between each other, that's where APIs come into picture. Let's say you have a backend uh, platform which is written in Java or Spring Boot microservices. You, you have your front end. The back end API will give an API so that the data can be communicated between the two systems. It's not always the front end and the back end. It can always or it can also be between two different systems interacting with each, e with each other. Let's say you build a custom application which has an API. You can send that API and integrate with the back end of say Salesforce or SAP, etc. So in short, API is used to communicate between two different applications. Now, what are some of the standards uh, that are used in industry, right? So, one is RESTful APIs, right? So, anything that we do, we build a lot of APIs which adhere to REST principles. We also have JSON APIs which are consistently using JSON format as the primary way of building the output. Then you have Open API which is a Swagger, right? So that's used for describing and documenting RESTful APIs. There are other standards like SOAP, etc. But they, again, it depends on which application you're working with, but that's one of the options that can also be used, SOAP. What are some of the HTTP verbs that are commonly used with, with respect to APIs? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and that defines various methods that indicate the desired action to be performed on a resource. Some of the commonly used HTTP verbs are get, post, put, patch, and delete. Get method is used to retrieve a resource or a data. That means whenever you want some to you want to get some data from the API, you will use the get method. Whenever you're submitting a data, like say login sending a particular data, adding a payment, creating a new uh, data, etc. Put is used to update or replace an existing resource. Patch will partially update an existing resource. Let's say you have 10 fields in the database that you want to update, but you want to update only one field. We usually use patch. When you want to delete a data, you use the delete method. What are the different status codes that you work with when you're integrating with an API? So each status code stands and indicate a particular status or a response. When the server returns a status code of 200, that means the request was successful. 201 means created. That means when you send or post a data, you create a new resource. 201 tell you that it is created. 400 is bad request. That means invalid or mal malformed data. If the expected input is a number, 
and you end up sending a string that results into your batch request. That means any data mismatch etc leads into a 400 request. Now 401 is unauthorized. That means let's say you're trying somebody is trying to send data and it doesn't match the token or it's unauthorized. That's where 401 request 401 status code is sent back. 404 is the most common thing that you would have already noticed, which means the requested data or the resource was not found on the server or the database. 500 stands for internal server error. That means something crashed, something went wrong at the server. The best way is to give status 500 and exit that particular program. Now let's talk about the HTTP response headers. Response headers provide additional information about the response sent by the server. These are important because sometimes let's say you're downloading a PDF or an image, you might want to specify content type. When you're trying to do a caching, you might want to enable the cache control. When you also want to indicate the location, you might want to pass location. So these are commonly uh, passed as response headers from the server when you work with any integrating into any API. Let's talk about some of the design patterns that are very important, especially when building APIs. Some of the common thing ones are CRUD operations, right? Which is create, read, update, and delete. You also have pagination, which is splitting large result set into smaller pages for easy retrieval. Then you have filtering, that means when you have a large data set, you pass params and set filters so that you narrow down the expected result set. Especially applicable with respect to e-commerce or shopping, etc. Authentication, extremely important whenever you're building any API for any domain, any industry, any website. Authentication is extremely important to identify what customers through a token or a specified API key, etc. Let's talk about the architecture. So API architecture refers to the overall structure and organization of an API. Some of the common ones are like I talked about REST APIs, right? So RESTful APIs. So those are based on standard HTTP verbs and resource based URLs. You also have GraphQL which is a query language and runtime for APIs, right? It's more flexible, it's faster, it um, it works on uh, large data sets and helps you to get you and build your own, um, you know, kind of a query or a standard that you can send to. So we specify what data we want and we get only that. So GraphQL is yet another very popular uh, architecture, especially when you're working with MERN stack uh, based on React uh, JS kind of applications. <coughs> then let's talk about API security. API security involves protecting APIs and their data from unauthorized access or malicious attacks. So when you talk about security, there are few things that you should that are common in terms of security measures. Authentication is verifying the identity of the API consumers. Authorization means determining whether an action is allowed to perform or not, right? Encryption. Encryption is very, very important because you, <coughs> whatever data we send needs to be encrypted using protocols like HTTPS, uh, making SSL layer, making sure your data is thoroughly encrypted end to end and there is no data leaks in between. Rate limiting is yet another uh, important concept. There is a lot of DDoS attacks, uh, especially when you look at, uh, let's say a bank or an e-commerce website or a payment gateway, you might see uh, the malicious attacks might be coming from a certain IP address. You might want to restrict how many requests are coming per second from a particular IP address, etc. So rate limiting is yet another very, very important concept from security perspective. Testing. Let's talk about testing the APIs. 
So there are different tests that are performed uh, when building APIs. You perform unit tests, which developers will perform. You have integration tests that we, uh, we test when we integrate multiple APIs and systems together. You have performance tests to evaluate the performance and scalability of APIs. There can be other tests like say, um, you know, security test, etc., which are more detailed in terms of, you know, um, like making sure the APIs are thoroughly uh, stable, secured, and performance wise, they are optimized. <coughs> now, let's talk about some of the API development platform and tools, right? So, APIs can be built on literally um, any of the backend uh, frameworks that you already might be using. It includes Express.js, Django, Swagger, or you can use Node.js, you can use Next.js, uh, you can use Java, Spring Boot, Microservices, uh, you can use Ruby on Rails. So there are any backend uh, uh, framework that you have worked or aware of, you can use that to build the APIs. <coughs> now let's talk about some of the implementation platforms, right? So once you have your API, you might want to deploy it somewhere and implement it, right? You have to push it. So some of the leading uh, ones are, you can use AWS API Gateway, you can use Google Cloud Endpoints, you can use Azure API Management, you can use um, DigitalOcean, etc. There are a lot of uh, platforms available. These are the leading ones that helps us in implementing and deploying and managing the APIs end to end. Let's talk about the API performance. Now, speed, security, efficiency, and scalability, these are some of the common um, things that APIs are built on. They are the foundation for it. So some of the common things that are best practices used for optimizing the APIs are, you enable the caching, right? That's number one. Then you have the response compression. Always compress the response that is going out. And most common method in that is using the gzip then you optimize the database queries right uh, you only pull data that is required the result set should be paginated you have rate limiting so that you increase the performance what are some of the monitoring tools that are used for apis so there are different tools and platforms available for monitoring analyzing the apis etc some of the commonly used and the leading ones are you can use new relic tool. Uh, it's a comprehensive monitoring and observability platform. You have Datadog, which is yet another uh, cloud monitoring and analytics platform. You have Pingdom. Um, it's a website and performance monitoring tool, not restricted to only these three, but these are three are some of the ones that I have used in the past. So I've listed down here, but there are other monitoring tools that you can also consider. All right, so that brings us to the end of the series. I wanted to give you an overview of the entire API um, use cases end to end. So that was this tutorial. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it helpful. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you get updates on all the series that I post. If you are interested, you can learn about HTML and CSS on my channel as well. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, you take care. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. See you.